Learn React.js from scratch by creating a to-do app. Today's video requires knowledge of JavaScript. If you need help with that, check out the video up top and down below. Links to all of the source code and resources used today will be available through the GitHub link in the description. First, let's open VS Code. Here we can open the folder where we want to create this React application. Now we need to open a brand new terminal and more specifically a command prompt. And here we need to make sure that we have node installed by running node dash V. If you don't have a version showing here, navigate to node.js.org and install node. That link will also be available in the description. Next, we need to make sure that we also have npm installed using npm-v. Once we verify both of those, we want to run the statement npm create v at latest. This is going to help us set up our React app using v. For the project name, we'll just say period, which is going to use whatever our directory name is here. For the package name, we'll just call this React to do app. And then we need to select a framework and we're gonna be using React and then we're gonna use basic JavaScript today. Now you guys can see some of the folders and files displaying, but we need to install our dependencies using npm install. This will take a second, so let it go ahead and run. Now you guys can see that everything was successfully installed and set up. To make sure our React app works, we need to run npm run dev, which is gonna open our live server, and this will provide us with a locally hosted URL. If you guys are seeing all of this default V plus React content, you guys know that you set it up and installed it correctly. Next, I wanna explain how this React application is working. So first in our SRC folder, this is gonna be where all of our components are housed. The main component is going to be our app.jsx right here. This is a functional component since we're using the function keyword. And up here at the top is where we import all of the stuff that we need, like our CSS file and the logos that we're displaying. Down here within the return statement is where we can create all of our content. You guys will see all of this stuff is what we're reviewing in our live server. Our main.jsx is going to be the entry point for our React code. This is going to render our main app component right here to the root element in our index.html. So in our index.html, you can see that root element right here is just a basic div with the ID equal to root. In this index.html, we can also change the title of our application. So we'll do that right now. And this will reflect in your browser tab in your live server. Here you can also add CDNs like Bootstrap and Fawn Awesome or whatever you might need. Next, our package.json is going to contain the metadata for our project, like the name of it. It's going to have scripts that we can run. Notice that we just ran this dev script to open our live server. And this is also gonna list out all of our dependencies below. Now we need to start setting this up. So we'll navigate back to our app.jsx and you'll notice up here that it's importing a CSS file. So we wanna to go to this CSS file and we wanna get rid of all this default information. And I'll go ahead and replace this with my own custom styling. If you guys wanna use this styling, use the GitHub link in the description. Next, we need to do the same thing in our index.css, but we won't replace it. We'll just leave this file blank. Now back in our app.jsx, we can get rid of all of these imports at the top, except for our CSS file. And we wanna make sure that we include our React import. We can get rid of this state right here, and then we can delete all of this default content. And you guys will notice in our live server, all of that goes away. And notice that I left this fragment here. So the way that React works is it needs a fragment or a div, and then all of the content within that. So I'm gonna move this over to the left with my live server on the right, minimize my file explorer. And just to make this a little bit more clear, I will change this to a div. And keep in mind, this looks like normal HTML code, but it is technically JSX. So that means there's gonna be a few differences. So here, instead of using class, we want to use class name and we'll make this equal to app. Then we need to title this. So we'll create an H1 and say to do 
app. Here we'll create another div with a class of input container. Inside of this, we'll create an input element. We're going to leave the type equal to text and I'll space this out a little bit. I'll make the value equal to new task and include a placeholder of add a new task. Then I wanna create a button that says add task. Underneath the input container div, we'll create an unordered list with a class of task list. Then we'll just create an li element and say item one. So now you guys can see all of the basic code is set up and ready to go. But now we need to make this interactive and dynamic. So the first thing we need to do over here is also import our use state from React. And between the function keyword and the return statement is where we can create all of our functions and state variables. So we'll start off with the const keyword and we'll create a state variable called tasks and then a state function called set tasks. We want to make this equal to use state and inside of this we want to pass in an empty array so what's going on here is we're setting up a variable called tasks a function called set tasks that we can use later on in our code to change our tasks variable and then whatever we put inside of these parentheses is going to be the value of our variable right here until we change it. So tasks right now is equal to an empty array. So we need to do this one more time, but instead of tasks, we want to say input value, and then this is gonna be set input value. And instead of an empty array, we want to make our input value variable equal to an empty string. Now we want to create a function called add task. For this function, we're not going to include a parameter and we need to use an if statement and we're going to check our input value and we're gonna see if it is not equal to an empty string, meaning the user has to enter something. We also wanna use the trim method to get rid of any white space. So if the user enters something, we can call our set tasks function. And what we wanna do is pass in a new array with anything that might already be in our tasks variable and also include the new input that the user just entered. You guys will notice that I'm creating a brand new array here. That's because in React state, is treated as immutable. So we need to create a brand new array from scratch rather than just appending a new value to an already created array. After that, we need to call the set input value function and just change it back to an empty string. Next, we wanna create another function called delete task. And here we wanna pass in an index so we can delete one task at a time. So we'll create a variable called updated tasks, make this equal to our tasks array. And what we want to do is use the filter method. Keep in mind, filter is going to return a brand new array. So here we'll pass in two parameters. The first is going to be the task and the second is going to be the task index. And here we want to use the task index and see if this is not equal to the index that we're deleting. So what's going to happen here is we're creating a brand new array and we're excluding the task at the given index that we want to delete. And after that, we need to call set tasks and change it to our updated tasks variable. Hey guys, you're going to notice nothing's happening yet because we actually need to set all of this up within our return statement. So first we wanna change the value to the input value. And this is going to make our input a controlled input in React. Then we need to use an on change event listener where we pass in our event and we simply wanna use the set input value function and reference our event dot target dot value. Next, we'll use an on click event listener for our button. And we simply want to call our add task function. Now down here within our list, we can get rid of this hard coded in list item. And what we want to do is use our tasks variable and we want to map through this. We want to include two parameters. The first is going to be the individual task 
followed by the index. And make sure you use normal parentheses since we're using a map method here. Here we'll create an li element with a class of task item. And then we also need to include a unique key for each item. So React will render this properly and we'll just use our index. Next, we can create a span element and we want to pass in the name of our task. After that, we need to create a button where we can delete the task. So all we need to do here is use an on click event listener and we just need to call our delete task function and we want to delete that specific item with the index. And what we want to do here is reference our delete task function and we want to delete it wherever that index is located. Now, if I make this full screen and I add a new task like shop and click add a task, it will render it down below within my unordered list. And since this has a specific index tied with it, we can click delete and it will delete just that item. So I'll add a shop back and then I'll add something like workout, add this task. So we can add individual tasks and delete individual tasks. Congratulations, you just learned React by creating a basic to-do app. If you have any problems or any questions, reach out to me through the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this video helped out.